Maybe hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. You're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you want to bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. Hey friends, Shane from HighRunch.com, and uh, I've had a, a YouTube fan here staying for the week and doing some uh, engine building and our learning, I should say, because all we did was uh, disassembly, but we pulled that DL650 motor, got split. I know for quite some time, like going on a year, I had uh, started to show off, I bought this uh, GSX-R750 race bike um, from a storage locker auction. And it's freaking stupid cool, because it had a, uh, a uh, hypercycle Suzuki sticker on there. So I reached out to my buddy and he said, yeah, I originally built that. We're talking 2001, so it's a long time ago. But uh, you know, a lot of hands touch bikes, you know, over the years and, and mess with them or whatnot. But this thing is full of really sick parts. Um, you know, Olin's uh, dampener on here, uh, Olin's shock, tack rear sets, titanium exhaust, just tons of goodies. Uh, anyway, on the final disassembly, I wanted to show you some of the things we found. So first off, when we went to pull the uh, oil, uh, well, actually, the coolant was insane. You got to check this out. Well, there wasn't one drop in that radiator, but uh, comment below where you think it went. What's your first best guess? And then when we went to pull the oil drain plug, this is what we found. What? <laughs> I found the radiator oh, problem. Oh, Ooh. shit. So and there it is. What do you do? We keep uh, tearing apart and uh, the motor was stuck. We were super stoked, obviously, to to get the motor to free up and have some hope and actually find it uh, like it, it's going to be super fixable. Uh, it's looking pretty good here. Pretty excited. I think this would be a fun one to uh, to get back uh, on the track. I just have to find I think it's a shark skin. So I'd have to get a shark skins lower and uh we, we'd be good to go we got everything else where we could uh get this thing going but check this out this is one of the funniest things i have found in a motor especially one with this much crap oh there look at that oil that crazy uh i mean it's just full of garbage you can see some of the stuff just spewing out uh look inside the cylinder head there it is going to be a mess of a restoration, but we're going to keep moving forward with it. Just because I, I think it's cool. Blowing fork seal. Lots of work. I think uh, we'll see if Continental teams up with us again this year. We'll do some Connie attacks on there. And uh, love those last year. Kind of a cool view. But anyway, here, what is the funniest thing that you have ever found inside a motor pulling it apart? And so, like I said, in 2001, we have no idea the history or how many times uh, people have worked on this. But I'm going to show you. We found that somebody at some point that worked on this had extremely long blonde or gray hair. This thing's got to be 20 inches long. I don't know if you'll even be able to see it in the video there. Look at that. We have this long hair. It's still going down. Let's see if I can find the end of it again. I'll just touch the crank. Yeah, okay. From my hand to that crank, somebody had really long blonde or gray hair. But hey, my friend, we'll go ahead and take that out of the motor for you. <laughs> Maybe I wear a hairnet. Anyway, it's funny. I just thought I'd uh, show people what we got going on. We are just down to uh, pulling the rods and the crank. Let me do that quick and then uh, show you like everything. Oh, yeah, I was bummed about this. I don't know if that'll... I think I could fill with my finger now, but the bearing looks good. So let me let me get the rest of this apart and we'll summarize this up. But man, comment below. What's the weirdest thing that you have ever found inside a motor? All right, we got full disassembly and uh, things are looking pretty good. Cylinders are looking pretty sweet. Pistons are looking good. I haven't measured or mic'd anything, but just it's really just a visual observation at this point. Transmission looks great. Actually, looks pretty new. Shift drum uh, and forks, honestly, for a 2001, look like somebody had been in there recently. But the big, the big problem is definitely. Uh, I'm just unsure if it was a blown head gasket or if it's something worse, like a cracked head or, or uh, even a block or something. Because obviously, all that water got into the oil. I'm not seeing like direct super pinpointed spot so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go through here and if anybody wants to give their two cents you're more than welcome but this would be a uh, cylinder number one and it almost looks 
like it may have peeked through there. The one thing about the number one uh, piston compared to the rest is it had a lot of that. The, this just doesn't do it justice here, but it's almost white in here. But it's not like if you look at how it was running, I mean, it wasn't wasn't running crazy lean or something. It doesn't seem to have uh, like a super you know, witnessed mark, if you will, where the cylinders was washed with engine coolant, especially have that much coolant, you know, all the coolant in the oil. Um, it's just a little bit confusing, but um, there was the number one piston for the number one part of the cylinder. And take this off here and kind of set it to the side. So one, you know, I encourage a lot of technicians to, uh, to take video and be able to zoom in and look close and whatnot. So when I look at this zoomed in, I'm having a hard time believing that it was this at all. It really looks like there's a good seal all the way around, but just want to encourage you to of uh, just the value of a uh, of video. To one, like I said, I can almost see where maybe it got through there, but man, it's not just like definitive, like when I've seen them break, you know, and Siamese in between and dump all the coolant out or just have a complete wash. But then we've got cylinder number two. And, and notice the combustion chambers are real, real similar. Only the piston on number one was so different, which made me think maybe the water evidence is sit from sitting on top of it and how it had kind of that white, you know, long-term corrosive look to it, if you will, or evidence. But And then uh, number three. And number four. And you know where I, I look at number one and I could see where it's just less than the rest. Number two is real similar. Number three's got a little bit more definitive mark of the head gasket. And, the, and there's a type of sealant they sprayed on here. I think it's like a copper spray or something. I don't know. I never use it. But um, this seems to be just from guessing. Once again, I haven't measured anything. It seems to be a thinner head gasket. But there's nothing really, this wasn't like, unfortunately I was a little bummed this wasn't, you know, a magic motor or something. I mean, it's stock uh, cam sprockets, if you will. They're not degreed. I have no idea if the cams are stock or they just appear to look so from like an average lobe. I mean, I don't see any markings or indications on there. No grind mark saying it's a Yoshimura cam or something like that. Crankshaft looks like it can be good and cleaned up. Pistons look like they may be good and cleaned up, like I said. Pop some new bearings in there. It's just going to be a huge cleanup. More than likely going to have to locate a water pump. Unsure how well this head will even clean up. So that could be a deal breaker there. Who knows? Might get too expensive. But, you know, let's look at the block itself, too. So we can see here. Let's see. Number one. Can't tell if that's where it popped through. <clears throat> number two, number three, number four. But even even all the bearings and stuff weren't like crazy horrible. A couple little spots in there, but nothing all the way through to where it can't just service the bearing. And the cases are good, so that was what I was really excited about. That the transmission, and everything else. So the really really expensive stuff, I think we're going to be good, especially because like in this case, this block is the you know the cylinder is part of the top half case of the engine if you will if you hadn't seen this or don't realize this so this one splits apart in three you've got your ultimate lower case which houses the transmission okay and then serves to uh house the oil pump the water pump and then uh passages to get uh, oil where it needs to go as well too you can see all these o-ringed holes here and then uh then you have what i would call the mid case which houses the, you know, completes the top of the transmission, houses the bottom of the crankshaft, and then marries to the, the, the cylinder case, if you will, completing all that. So that's what this generation of GSX-R is like. Pretty, pretty stinking cool. Um, that's it, my friends. So uh, appreciate you uh, tuning in. This is going to be, a, I think, a fun project. I'm hoping it doesn't go something so crazy out of budget. There's only about a billion of these around. Should be able to find the parts to get back together. My big goal is I think this would be a really fun one to uh, to get back on the track and have some fun. It's got a lot of goodies on it, a lot of cool suspension stuff. Maybe we'll get that stuff sent off and uh, reconditioned too. And 
It's a fun super bike to bring back together. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you would uh, comment below like the craziest thing you've ever found in a motor, or maybe you just got a funny or a crazy story you want to share. Uh, we love hearing it. Love hearing the comments. So special shout out to uh, Sterling from uh, Raven Arms who spent the last uh, few days at the How to Rent Shop just really learning uh, what he wanted to uh, his first. He says he's going to come back. So uh, what he wanted to do as far as, uh, you know, engine di diagnosis and tool usage and shop practices and just looking around a lot of the, uh, you know, the things that we have at the shop and what we do. This was uh, another thing he really loved as far as like all the organization. This was that DL650 motor we, uh, we stripped down here out of uh, this bike. You can see uh, the cases right there. Got a bunch of parts to order up on that. Uh, tune in if you haven't subbed to the channel tune in you'll see what was wrong with that one that one's she's really broke and uh like i said all the all the different things sterling wanted to learn about like you know how do we go about you know keeping organized how do we like label things how do we baggy things how do we how do we keep track of a thousand pieces so that it goes back together right so uh but he was he was really cool to uh i love these stories where we have a uh, a fan you know come and hang out um i've had this happen in uh in numerous cities and places where it's just been nothing but a great time love you fans so anyway always uh make sure if you're coming to phoenix you're going to be passing through or you want to say hi let me know uh and then uh when i'm out touring around i'm getting ready to head back home to uh to iowa too uh before i head off to japan so i'm going to be going to japan for about five weeks to uh work and train some techs over there and lots of cool fun stuff so if you haven't done so yet make sure Sub, join, stay connected, and uh, keep wrenching, my friends. I'm going to clean up and hit the road. All right. Appreciate you.